Well, so good morning. This is my name is Craig Blanchett. I'm a lifestyle health coach, and uh, it's my pleasure really to bring you this um, this episode. What we're doing uh, today actually is we're going over chapter three in Doctor A's Habits of Health. There's the visual. Here's the moving graphics. Ready? Yep. So chapter three here talks about motivation for change, and we have um, uh, the. Uh, the incredible health coach Martin Forbes is going to take us through that. But before we jump into that, I want to let you guys know that you can uh, go to iTunes and you can search the iTunes store for Healthy Huddle. And you can actually find this podcast. Uh, if you miss it, you can find it um, automatically delivered once you subscribe, just like you do with the newspaper. You subscribe once and it shows up every morning, right? Same thing. You subscribe once and once a week, you're going to get a delivery into your podcast player. Now, you may be going, podcast? What's that? Well, um, uh, it's something you want to take a look at because um, many of us, let me give you a little analogy. Many of us uh, utilize fuelings or some type of... Um, food that's been created that's very convenient it's very healthy and it's very tasty and so when you're out on the run and you're hungry you can you know i think that snickers said snickers satisfies right so when you get hungry you just grab a snickers well i wouldn't recommend that because that's uh it may satisfy your temporary hunger but it's gonna not do very good things later but we've got some alternative types of things that we can deliver nutrition to our bodies in a very convenient way and i believe that podcasts are the same thing for your brain is they allow you to deliver healthy content to your brain in a very very easy method and so um the nice thing about it is when a new podcast has been released to a channel that you subscribe to it automatically shows up on your phone and you just click and play now, if you're an Android user, uh, you can go to the Google Play Store and download podcast, radio, podcast and radio addict. There's many different podcast players, but that's just one. And then usually once you're in the program, the podcast program, think of a podcast player as a radio. If you don't have a radio, you can't listen to a radio station. But once you get the radio, then you get to tune into the station that you want. So that's what podcasts do. So you're going to download either um, Podcast and Radio Addict or some type of podcast player. And then you have to find the channel you want to listen to. So there's a search button somewhere on the podcast player. And you type in Healthy Huddle and then subscribe to it. And it'll automatically deliver those to you every week. So that's a little bit about that. And of course, if you're listening to this on podcast, um, you're welcome to join us live Fridays, 9 a.m. Pacific. And uh, we meet in a technology called Zoom. So if you go to your web browser and type in zoom.us, zoom.us, and then the, the meeting room that we meet in is 503. 9741671. And so that's what we do and that's who we are and I want to bring on my co-host or guest the guest um speaker for today is Martin Forbes. And uh his video is unmuted. He wants to make a um a grand entrance maybe, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, Martin, where are you? Uh oh, I'm gonna have to roll with it today, aren't I? Oh, there he is. I was getting, I was actually uh, refilling. Refill. Uh, you were getting some water. You were thought Craig's long winded this morning. I got time. Yes, <laughs> I usually have five minutes, and I don't know what the heck you, you know. Yeah. So on. one of the things, just as we're getting started, if you guys have your book, if you don't grab it, if you don't have it, go grab it. Just go get it. And then we're going to be reviewing this. Martin's going to go through, and I'm, I'm teaching you on this right now because you can sign up to actually teach one of these lessons. And so um, uh, Martin's going to go through some of the main highlights that he thought stood out. And then we're going to have a group discussion 
So make sure you bring your highlights because you have some things that stood out to you that you may not have thought about in a little while. So that's why we cracked this book open because in the end, it's not about reading this book one time. It's about practicing the things this book talks about. And that's where the value is. All right, Martin, back to you. Motivation for change. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Um, this I'm glad I got to do this chapter. This is, I think, one of the best chapters in the book because it lays the foundation. It's setting the rest of the book up for success. And that's just the importance of it because we get into the other chapters, we don't know where we're going. And this is just laying that, uh, the map and the groundwork for us. And if we think about January, how many people have asked our friends, what are you looking to change? What's different for you? Um, but do we ever ask the other follow-up questions is, why do you really want to change that? And so that's why this kind of, this chapter resonates with me and it's that underlying motivation. And so if we think about it, the chapter has three or six main concepts or six ideas that we're gonna go through. Uh, motivation. Is that, on, is that on page 19? Or what page is that on? Chapter, oh, you want me? Come on, work it out for us, man. Let us follow along. No, because I'm I'm going to take you down a little bit more. Oh, you just go path. for it, man. You just go for it. I can't so wait. So we got motivation factors, really the first section. Because you guys can all look in the book and, and come up with uh, problem solving versus desired outcome is section number two. Those really are defining. Those are how we're defining what we're looking for. The next four, structural, uh, teachable moments, structural tension, Number five choices, discipline in key choices. Those are our action steps of what we've defined that we what we want to accomplish. But if we think of it this way, we have these three pigs. They're living at home. They hate it. They want to get the heck out of the house. And we'll call them Larry, Mo, and Curly. And so they want to take this action. They just know they don't like where they're at. And Curly has this guy who's He's been successful. You know, he got out. He's doing something that's working for him. So he leaves and he builds this house and he, he builds it out of straw because that worked for this other, his other buddy. Larry builds one out of sticks because that, he saw that worked for someone else. But Mo took a little bit more time. He wanted to focus on what do I really want to accomplish? Why do I want to get out of this house? What's my desired outcome? Well, what happened to Curly? Some guy came, you know, the little uh, nefarious person came up who wasn't, didn't have his best interest in heart and he blew his whole thing, blew his whole house apart. And that plan didn't work. So he was focused on the problem of solving a problem, which he just didn't like where he was. And he chose an action that would hope get him that result. And that's what we do with, uh, when people are focused on a problem, they're gonna have some success right away. They're gonna start feeling good. They'll take some action. They're gonna feel good about the action they took, but they'll resort back to what they were doing before. So where did, what happened to, oh, sit up. <laughs> so where'd Curly go? Well, Curly went up and shacked up with Larry because Larry had a little bit better plan. His house was a little bit more, it was stronger. Maybe. So he tried the next best, best thing was he built his house out of six because someone else told him that was good. Well, that lasted for a little bit as he felt good about it. His environment was nice, but he still started coming to the temptations and the big bad wolf, he came back with some buddies and that didn't last. So then they come knocking on Mo's door. Why was Mo successful? Mo, when he built this house, he actually went and visited with an architect. The architect asked, asked him some questions. What's your desired outcome? Why do you want to build this house? What's going to be different for you, Mo, when you're living in this house? How's your life going to be? Then let's go ahead and set, a, let's go ahead and set about giving you some tools and strategies and, and some actions that you can accomplish that and be successful. Isn't that what we're looking for? Hmm. 
I love the uh, way you drew a story that we're all familiar with in and um, really uh, talked about taking the time because we look at that story of the free, the, the free pigs, the three pigs, and uh, you, know, you, you hear about the brick and you think about, oh yeah, bricks are strong. What you don't think about is the work it takes to actually build the bricks and it's a little more effortful. It's a little more of a skill set. You get some planning and preparation and you can throw a house of sticks and hay together pretty quick, right? Um, but it's worth it because it's where your safety is. And also, lastly, I just want to say nefarious. Come on, Martin. I'm like, I had to go on Google. <laughs> <laughs> some nefarious person comes along. Okay, a wolf. <laughs> all right, it's all right, man. I just, a wolf I, named Nefarious. I, I, would, I would have not liked it if you had not used that word as much. <laughs> yeah, good. But, but here, what it gets down to is, uh, and I heard this saying a long time ago, and it's the seven P's. Proper planning prevents, or actually I'll use six P's because there is a bad word in there. Proper <laughs> planning prevents poor performance. So if we're properly planning what we're at, what our outcome, our desired outcome is, and then we get back into the rest of the chapter about the actions that are necessary to really achieve that, then we're going to set ourselves up for success. What that makes me think of, Martin, and I absolutely loved, as Alex said, your analogy is wonderful. My brain could go right along with you on this, um, this sort of journey of exploring what it takes to to structure something good in our lives. And what I think about is uh, the pitfalls along that, that journey, even uh, within our program, even though the pitfalls aren't meant to be there, but they can be there, right? So if, if, uh, if we, as a client or one of our clients, um, starts out on this journey and they tap into that incredible tool of the fuelings, Right? Oh my goodness, they're building a straw house and they don't even realize it. And sometimes it's really hard to rein them in and kind of say, wait a minute, let's, let's build carefully, let's build intentionally because they're in a hurry. They want, they want that freedom and they're excited about it and they're not seeing exactly what you're sharing. And sometimes we don't either. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't <laughs> always do that either, you know, in a hurry. So I love that architect analogy and how, uh, how much responsibility it is between the client and the coach to architect their lives um, together. Christina, thank you, Daniel. Christina, you had your hand raised here. Let me unmute you. Uh, there you go. Hi. Yep. Hmm. Meet you again. Hold on a second here. Uh, yeah, I'll get you. You drive. Are you there? Yep, loud and clear. Okay, good. Um, driving. Um, so, <laughs> wait a minute. There you go. Totally love that metaphor. Say, say I totally love the metaphor. Um, you cut out a little bit there. Say, start over. I I said I can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I really love the metaphor. Um, the Larry Curly Mo. I I think that um, something that came to my mind when when you were talking was you know I scripturally you look in the Bible and it it talks about uh, building your house on a strong foundation so when the waves come it it doesn't doesn't crumble into a million pieces and and I think that's that's a part of the the motivation is part of that foundation and um, and it that's that's what keeps me going is, is knowing that um, I'm not just losing weight, but I'm feeling better about myself and about the direction I'm going with my life and being healthier and, um, and being there for the ones I love. And, um, and that's the biggest, the biggest part of my motivation is, is doing it for that and, and myself. And so I think um, with that strong foundation, having the coach, having the support, the community with the, the like you said, Craig, the common unity that we all have to, to be there for one another because we know the struggle, like that's, that's where it's at. And, and so I just, I just wanted to share that, that I, I feel like having that foundation is, 
is key, especially when you're health coaching, is that people need to know that it's not just about it's not just about doing it for somebody, but it's about doing it for yourself and knowing that there's people that to back you up. Well, and you had some, thank you, Christina. You had some, uh, a, a milestone today in your journey. You want to share that with us? I did. I've, I've officially lost 50 pounds on plan y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. Awesome. Yeah. Straight you guys, up. let me just share this too. My pre-pregnancy clothes are too big. Let me just share that right now. Let's <laughs> praise God. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> So oh, who, my. Uh, anybody else have a comment or two about something from this, um, uh, from the chapter that stuck out to you, or even off of um, uh, Martin's analogy? You can raise your hand and I can call in here, or you can just unmute and start talking. Oh, Kim Stewart, you're so polite. Would you like to talk next? Sure, thanks. <laughs> um, one of the things that, um, that uh, drew me in um, as I was reviewing the chapter again is just the focus on choices. And I know um, mentally I've had different, definitely have had times where I've told myself I have to do something because I've set this goal out in front of myself. Um, and I think this chapter really helped me um, identify that so that I could change it. And then, then um, there's a section down, you know, the key to discipline. Cause I've thought a lot about that too, because um, I think our society doesn't put a, a good emphasis on discipline. A lot of times it's more focused on, um, you know, just self gratification and, you know, when we want things, we want them now. Um, and um, I, you know, the very first line on page 27 in that section on key, the key to discipline is, you know, throughout your life are faced with situations that demand a choice. Um, and I, I was reflecting on this because up, up above, there's a, an example written out about somebody making a choice of whether or not to have a banana split. And I, I think so many times I've faced that choice with, um, I can have it or I can not have it. But in the moment, not having it doesn't seem nearly as good as having it <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah. um, but the true choice is, is a farther vision. You know, I can have this and sacrifice what I want down the road, you know, like kind of pulling back and seeing, you know, this is a choice between, you know, where I want to be, you know, being active with my kids, uh, you know, in the game and on the sideline, or I can have this now and, and have it take me off track. Um, and so I thought that was just a great refresher for me to kind of review again in this chapter. Nice. Here's, um, I want to show, there's a graphic here. I want to bring up for everybody because this is a really big talking point for me anyway is this this concept here the visual helps me you know uh, you come to the point um, intense emotional conflict so what do they mean by intense emotional conflict well it could be you go to the doctor and the doctor says you have diabetes that's intense emotional conflict you know uh, you look in the mirror and the person that looks back at you is just not the shape you want to see you know or maybe you go put on these pants that you're really hoping to wear and they just don't fit you know and and you've got this big event you were planning on wearing them to right that's this emotional conflict could be a number of different things um, I think of another idea of intense emotional conflict you're at Disneyland with your family and you're sitting on the bench missing out on the memories because you just don't have you just can't say yes because your feet just hurt too bad. So that's that emo intense emotional conflict, right? And so um, usually what it might do is it might lead you to taking action. So you go buy a year subscription to, you know, um, rock hard abs, right? Or maybe you, um, you go and get a gym membership, you know, and you have them do the auto um, debit, you know, and so you've, you've taken action, you've, you've done something, you, you ordered the P90X video system or the, you know, the, what is it, the thigh master, right? So you, you do, you take this action and psychologically, you actually feel a little less conflict. Things, you feel a little better because you did something and after all, T tomorrow that video is going to come and I'm going to get on that program. 
right? And so when you have, by the time the video comes, because you've taken an action, you don't have that, that emotional conflict, that intensity that got you to move. And so once you take an action, you lower that conflict. And what happens is you, you have less emotional conflict. And when, you're, when, you're, when your motivation is connected to the, the, some pain, some discomfort, the problem is, is when the, the pain or discomfort reduces, so does the action. And so this is the classic sort of clinical description of the yo-yo, of the yo-yo diet. And so um, anyway, so I wanted to toss that out and break that down and see if there's some, maybe some, some comments or unpacking of that that you guys would like to share or, or something else from the, cha from the chapter. You can either wave at me and I'll unmute you or you can, yeah, Martin, you're up. There's something else that was uh, in living in that conflict <clears throat> and going back and rereading this, um, I kind of forgot, have had forgotten that living in that conflict, the emotional conflict, that's, we're living in a state of anxiety. So that emotional conflict is creating anxiety in our life. And remember farther on in the chapters, if we have that anxiety, that's creating, um, that's releasing some of those wonderful toxins into our body that's creating that unhealthy state. Mm -hmm. you keep what do you, what do you guys think about the idea is that intense emotional pain can we utilize that somehow? I mean, is, is it useful at any level? Stephanie, you had your hand up. I don't know if you, if you want to say something else or just answer that question, but let me unmute you. Go ahead. Um, well, I experienced that after 50 years of abusing my body by having fun. Mm. I uh, never was like a junk food eater or anything bad. I was quality food, drink, not eating um, on a regular basis, being a nurse, um, knowing everything and kind of yo-yo dieting. Um, until my body failed me and I ended up having surgery. So when I found the program, I was in that pain because I never wanted to experience that recouping time, which took me out of my job for a year and I had to reinvent myself. Lost 80 pounds on this program and what I've learned to do now is kind of lead from the future to keep my motivation up. Um, and for me, by leading um, with the future, I know I never wanna go back to that pain. I know that um, if I don't take care of myself, I could end up with surgery, let's say again, for those areas that are above and below. And I don't want my family to have to push me in a wheelchair. And I don't wanna have to have help going to the bathroom or turning in bed or whatever. So that's my pain because all I have to do is think of my 27-year-old daughter having to be obligated to do something for me that way. And that's what helps to maintain my weight now and not be a yo-yo dieter um, since. Mm. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, you're welcome. Great. To the huddle too. Yeah. Who else has something? We got a few minutes left here. So it sounds like um, pain is um, a good thing at times to remind us uh, that we don't want to go back to where we were before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes it's looking in the mirror. Sometimes it's standing on a scale or sometimes it's the doctor telling you, uh, you need to uh, get back on your, on what you were doing before. Mm -hmm. So Eileen, and I think what we're coming to is that it's, it's probably not all one or the other, but clearly if you're only focused on getting less of the bad, that's, gonna, that's going to eventually lead you to less of the bad, and then you'll end up slowly getting more of the bad again, because you're not focusing on moving towards something, you're just trying to get less of the bad, not more of the good. 
And so I think, I think exactly what you're, what we're kind of talking about here. I, over time, when I, I personally believe that the pain is the jump start to get us off the dang couch, to get us to do something, right? And then, but, but people that I've coached, they start out with a pretty good head of steam, right? And then they get to this, this in-between place where they're not, they're not really able to stay on the five and one. They're choosing not to stay on the five and one. And they're, they're not where they, their goal is, but they're not where they started. And they get kind of this in-between sort of place. And, and my opinion, uh, my experience is that um, you either are going to go back to the pain. And as the pain increases, so will the push. And it'll get you going again. And you can stay there your whole life that's the yo-yo or you can you can evolve if if you will you can advance in your thinking and you can start instead of looking at the past to motivate you can let the the future pull you and that's that pain pushes desire pulls and so if you're stuck in the middle you don't have enough pain and you haven't spent enough time with desire you're just going to flail around in that middle zone until you until you stop and do a mentoring session with your coach where we aim, we awaken that intrinsic motivation to that desire so that it starts to have pulling force to move you. Kim, you raised your hand. Yeah, I, I love that analogy of the rubber band. And I think it works really well because I've, I've seen it in myself and I've seen it in um, other clients that we always have to kind of reset where that goal is because, you know, when, when we set a goal out in front of ourselves, that rubber band is stretched. And if it's stretched, if it's, if we really stretch ourselves, sometimes we can go flying, you know, we can fly um, even beyond. But as soon as that goal is not far enough in front of us, and sometimes I know I made this mistake when I, I reached my goal weight, you know, I didn't have the next goal. And when the rubber band has no um, tension on it, it doesn't go anywhere. It falls right down. So um, I, I think that goes along with what you were saying, Craig, is, is, you know, sometimes those things can get us going. We still need to set our sights on where, where are we going next mm -hmm. to keep that rubber band tight? Yeah. When you accomplish that big thing, um, don't, don't neglect the next thing. So stretch your rubber band out there again and let it pull you and then stretch it again and then pull you and stretch it again. And what happens over time is you're just going to be getting a bunch of dreams accomplished, right? Just keep doing What if that was your reputation? Yeah, they just seems to always just bust it out and get get stuff. They do stuff. You talk about a Great, yeah. Yeah, Martin? Yeah, you talked about that in, I believe it was number four, number five. Was it be clear or to be getting clarity of where we're at and where we want to go or being clear and honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. and some people, when we have this nature of when we're being honest or we're, we're trying to get clarity or being honest with ourselves, we're really not being honest in the sense of this is what I really deep down want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. We're being honest to the sense of, this is what I want to accomplish because this is what I think I can accomplish mm. and that will be good enough. Yeah. And so we accept the good enough to be successful versus the awesome to be, you know, if I don't make it to awesome, I'm going to make it to pretty to better than where I'm, what I'm accepting for. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the value of having a coach in our lives, right? Um, so we got just a few minutes left here and, um, Debbie, I know you had your hand up here. I'll unmute you. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to kind of reiterate what everybody is saying, but I don't have my book with me, so I'm not sure if I'm going to go into the next chapter, but this what was different with this program than any other program is the emphasis on motivation. And, and I was stuck in that, in that, you know, going back to yo-yoing and um and what i found was that oh i'm losing my train of thought but um it the outcome versus conflict i did to actually think about what why i want to stay where i'm at because i'm in maintenance and so 
why I want to stay and the motivation to stay that way instead of sitting there and looking at it as I'm going to go back to where I am. I'm going to look at where I'm at and why I like being here. And that is my motivation now. Mm. And um, it wasn't until it was the habits of health that just kind of clicked. It was, mm. it just clicked on what he was saying and it made sense and I experienced it. And um, yeah, I just love reminding myself when I have to make these tough choices on what I want to do. Is that where going to get me where I want to be? Is that going to keep me where I am, which is where I like to be? Mm-hmm. Like my you know, clothes not feel, you know, not being tight. I like to be able to um, walk a half a mile to a mile, mile if I have to. I lost my keys last week, yesterday, and I had to walk home a half a mile. And I booked, and I, you know, I wasn't even thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so that's that's yeah. what this program is giving. Yeah, me. thanks, Deb. You know, if you didn't listen to the Habits of Health webinar this week, I, the the topic was you've got to move it, move it. And one of the sometimes you're I'm. Uh, when I talk about certain things, these words just come out and I don't know where they come from, but they just, and so the, the word that came out this week was I'm looking for more yes days. Right. And, and so w- w- maintaining the weight, the, the healthy weight that you've established and the quality of rhythm of life that you have means you have more yes days and you want to maintain more yes days. So uh, the question was, I don't have my keys. I need to get home. Yes, I can run home. That's a yes day for you. So, well, that's great, you guys. This is um, super exciting. We're at the bottom of the hour, and so we're going to move along. But next week, of course, we're going to be going to chapter four. And the title of chapter four is It's All About Choice. So thank you all for joining us today, and we will see you uh, next time.